Welcome everyone to the Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society's virtual field trip to Nimisla Reservoir. Uh, my name is Michelle Brocious. I am your bird walk leader tonight. I am a board member of the Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society and a field trip co-coordinator. Let's see if, how I can advance slides without putting my mouse on the screen every time. Let's see if that works. Okay. All right, so um, a little bit about Nemesilla Reservoir to get started. Oh, and I should probably mention how this is going to go. I'm going to talk about the location, uh, the target species. Uh, we had a rare bird that I'll talk about, and then we'll go through everyone's submissions. Um, and then there'll be a thank you and a discussion at the end. Uh, but if you have any questions throughout, we are a small group tonight, so feel free to take yourself off mute and we can have conversation throughout as well. All right, so um, Nemesilla Reservoir. Uh, Portage Lakes in Green, Ohio consists of 13 bodies of water, of which Nemesilla Reservoir is the largest at 825 acres, 16 miles of shoreline, and the deepest spot being around 30 feet. It was built in 1936 by the Federal Works Progress Administration to provide for the water needs of Akron's industrial complex. Nemesilla is an important stopover habitat for migratory birds and is the staging area for several thousand purple martins during the month of August before they fly south for the winter. Um, and that's exactly why I chose this location. Um, and when you get the published version of the scrapbook, which Betsy will send out um, within the next couple of days, I encourage you to go back in there because I include some links throughout and one being um, just the, the, a link to the history of Nemesilla Reservoir. It's a, a little bit more in depth than what I shared with you tonight. Um, so go ahead and click that link and scroll down to the history and wildlife section. All right, the target species. Oh, we went to see the purple martins. Uh, according to the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, their description is putting up a purple martin house is like installing a miniature neighborhood in your backyard. In the east, dark glossy blue males and brown females will peer from the entrances and chirp from the rooftops all summer. In the west, martins mainly still nest the old-fashioned way in woodpecker holes. Uh, our largest swallows, purple martins perform aerial acrobatics to snap up flying insects. At the end of the breeding season, they gather in big flocks and make their way to South America. And there's a beautiful um, Photograph by Tom Fishburne of a juvenile purple martin. And then we also had a rare bird, the brown booby, um, showed up. So Nemesla welcomed a special guest during the month of August, a juvenile brown booby. Not only is this a rare bird, but also a record bird, as this is the first time the tropical migrant has been seen in Ohio. Uh, the brown booby was first spotted on Tuesday, August 25th, most likely blown off course by a recent hurricane, and drew crowds of birders eager for a look until its unfortunate demise was confirmed on Friday, September 4th. Um, and I included an article uh, from a, a local news station, Tropical Bird Finds a Temporary Home in Northeast Ohio, for more information um, about the event. Uh, an overview, according to the Cornell Lab, found in tropical oceans around the world, the brown booby is a dashing seabird, both in plumage, a natty brown and white, with bright yellow feet, and in flight style, which involves swift aerial maneuvers and death dives. Brown boobies do not nest on the United States mainland, but often visit waters off Florida or California. They occasionally stray as far north as Canada, which, you know, that was it's straight to Ohio, yay, and sometimes well inland. Like most seabirds that nest on islands, brown boobies are very vulnerable to introduce predators such as rats, mice, and cats. Um, and a, another picture of the brown booby at Nemesilla by Tom. And then I wanted to just show the range. Um, you know, it, it's easy to, to hear it from the description, but as you can see, the map provided by the Cornell Lab um, it really just kind of touches the southern tip of, of Florida and, and Canada there, and it, it doesn't really, you know, that's where it stays. It stays in that tropical area, and then I put, well, the star pretty much covers all of Ohio, but that's, you know, where it ended up is in Nemesilla Reservoir in Green, Ohio. All right, so diving into our submissions, Joanne and Terry Gorges. Um, visited on August 16th from 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m., 1.35 p.m., excuse me, and saw 17 species. So Joanne says, on Sunday, August 16th, Terry and I went to both Portage Lake State Park and Nemesilla 
At Portage Lakes, we birded from noon until 12.30 p.m. The temperature was 75 degrees and it was overcast. Next, we circled around Nemesilla from 12.45 until 1.35, stopping at a number of the parking areas. It started out being overcast, then it did rain, and the temperature dropped to 69 degrees. We also saw an osprey nest in one of the utility towers at Nemesilla. So some of the notable birds that I, um, I, I found, they, they saw a double crested cormorant at Portage Lakes and a belted kingfisher. And then at Nemesilla, they saw 42 double crested cormorant. I don't know if I've ever seen a flock that that large, so I thought that was really, really cool. Four green heron, I've never seen more than one green heron at any place, so I was really impressed by that as well. Uh, they saw two osprey, and then they did see um, an unidentified swallow, maybe a purple martin, so maybe they did get the target species. Um, so that's why I highlighted that in red as well. And then Sean, um, you are on the line. Uh, do you want me to read, or, or do you want to talk a little bit about um, what you saw yourself. I'm happy to read for you if you want. You can go ahead and read. Okay, cool. All right, so um, this reservoir is absolutely beautiful. Plenty of wildlife and scenery. I did complete this adventure in my kayak to capture the most amount of wildlife possible. On this trip, I got to see an osprey for the first time. This bird was fierce, but also quite beautiful. There was a nest in a tree at one of the points in the water. One would guard the young while the other would hunt for fish to eat. They are great at they are great at dive bombing their prey and catching them with their razor sharp claws. And um, I awarded you a lifer award since you hadn't seen an osprey before. And that's something I do on these field trips. Is you know you tell me that you that is your first time. Uh, as someone had a lifer at the last field trip, and Sean got the first one this time around. And then another lifer, um, Pie-Bill Grebe, congratulations, Sean. Um, he says, I also encountered a Pie-Bill Grebe for the first time as well. I thought it may have been a juvenile mallard, but after doing some research, that was incorrect. I did happen to capture some of the sunset that night as well, and it wasn't the most colorful sunset I have seen, but it certainly didn't disappoint. And there is the beautiful sunset that he captured. And I, I would agree, um, everyone that took pictures at Nemesilla had a picture of a sunset, and they're all gorgeous. I don't know if Nemesilla does a bad sunset. Um, and then finally, the Purple Martins came out very close to dark, and there were thousands of them. At one point, I was paddling to reposition my kayak, and they were flying fairly close to me. I felt as if I was in a helicopter at the end of Jurassic Park with the pterodactyls flying alongside. The moment was truly surreal, and unlike anything I'd ever experienced. After most, if not all, the Purple Martins had landed in the reeds for the evening, the noise they were making was immense. It all blended together and almost sounded like a flowing river or waterfall. And that was my first impression as well. Um, I had an amazing time on this trip and will definitely be going back to the reservoir for more kayaking and photography adventures. Um, and then he, Sean provided a really cool picture of uh, two Purple Martins flying close to the water and then the Purple Martins cluster, um, which is just incredible to see. And then I went. <laughs> this is this is my submission. So I visited Nemesilla on August 21st um, with the Northeast Ohio NEO Ladies Adventure Group for their Purple Martins Paddle event. Uh, it was a gorgeous night, probably one of the most beautiful sunsets I've ever seen in my life. And sharing that experience with a group of nature and adventure loving ladies, including my best friends in high school, was surreal and restorative to the soul. But you know, I. I I think any time I go out on nature is really restorative to my soul. Uh, notable birds I saw that evening include the purple martins, obviously, um, osprey, and a bald eagle. And then there's my photograph um, in my kayak. Uh, some of the ladies are in front of me as we're heading out to the reeds. So we paddle through a patch of lotus blossoms on our way to the reeds where the purple martins come in to roost. Um, and the picture on the left is actually taken by my friend Amy Pearson. I, I took a couple close-up pictures of the lotus blossoms, and I, they just came up blurry, so I asked her if I could steal this for the presentation, and she was very gracious and let me use it. Um, and then uh, the photo on the right is just a, a wide shot of, of the lotus blossoms. 
And I wanted to point out, I'm going to get a little sciency on all of you. Um, the, the water beating on the surface of lotus leaves is known as the lotus effect. Uh, this is a self-cleaning property that is a result of the leaves having a bumpy surface area of water repellent wax crystals. Any dirt, fungal spores, bacteria, or algae is picked up by the water droplets that cannot adhere to the surface of the leaf. And as the water droplets roll off the leaf, the contaminants are carried away with them. And I provided a link um, to the University of Wisconsin-Madison's um, The Lotus Effect page for more information. And you also get to see some practical applications um, of this that are invented or being invented. Yeah, a lot of a uh, number of people are uh, biomimicry people are looking at this for again self-cleaning surfaces. Yes. Yeah, it's it's awesome, and it came from nature. It's great. And then lastly, uh, once through the lotuses, the sun had set, providing a spectacular view. We headed toward the reeds, and I was confused by what sounded like rushing water or a waterfall, and then soon realized it was them, the purple martins, thousands of them in the reeds. Uh, they started swarming, darting through the air after their prey insects all around us. My camera was useless in the low light. I just I had my iPhone. That's all. I, I didn't want to take my good camera into the kayak. <laughs> um, but so my camera was useless in the low light, but some things are best preserved in memory. Um, so there's the picture of the sunset, the last picture I took of the evening um, before it got really dark. Alan Rand birded on August 22nd. Um, he visited Nimicilla on Saturday, August 22nd. It was by luck that I was invited by a friend to join her out on the water with her canoe club, the Ohio Historical Canoe Route Association. And I provided a link there if you're interested in um, learning more about that club. Um, my day started around 2.30 p.m. at the parking lot C5. It was hot and not many people were out. In addition to birds, there were plenty of other things to see. A giant snapping turtle prowling around, frogs jumping into the water with almost every step, catfish with huge gapes sucking up vegetation, and algae from the surface of the water. The sound was otherworldly, and dragonflies depositing eggs in open patches of water. After about an hour, I went down the road to the C6 parking area. Uh, not much was happening as it was still early in the afternoon, but the ospreys didn't seem to mind. Um, and I did provide, a, or Tom provided uh, a picture of the osprey on the right there. Very, very good shot, Tom. Um, no less than three were out and about. Uh, after a brief stop at parking area C7, I retraced my steps back to the C4 parking camping area to meet up with my friend. We did a loop of the area and checked out some of the unofficial trails. A small boggy patch behind a derelict basketball hoop was a gold mine. I got a good look at a yellow-throated vireo and a Canada warbler in non-breeding plumage almost amongst the usual suspects. The real magic happened at dusk. Uh, we pushed off in kayaks from the C4 boat ramp at about 7 p.m. and paddled out to the reed beds about a quarter mile into the reservoir. Double-crested cormorants and ring gulls were flying by at almost eye level. After checking out several options, we parked by some canoe club members my friend knew. They reported the area was a good place to watch the purple martins as they come into roost. An American coot didn't seem to mind all the company. The purple martins slowly started to show up about 30 minutes before sunset, 5 to 10 at first, then 50 to 100, and before you knew it, there were thousands. They looked like clouds of insects from a distance, but easily recognized through my binoculars. One of the ospreys felt left out and joined them for a few laps around the reservoir before heading off for the night. A bald eagle flew over shortly after sunset, completely disinterested in the spectacle, but created a great deal of excitement by the spectators near us on the water. Then the purple martin stole the show. The smaller individual clouds coalesced into one large cloud over the water. There were easily 10,000 of them. They flew all over the place until the time was right. The cloud began to swirl like a bird tornado over the reed beds until a few decision makers dropped into the reeds. The rest followed. They were stacked two, three, four to a reed. Surprisingly, they were relatively quiet while on the wing, but the reed beds were alive after they landed. It sounded as if a full stadium of people were shaking paper bags all at the same time. Another interesting twist was that no one got splattered on. You'd think we, you'd get covered with many birds flying directly overhead. You know, and I noticed that too. I was told to wear a hat, and I did. And luckily, they just—they were very polite this year. <laughs> 
All right, we headed back to shore before it got too dark to see because the show was about over at that time. During the paddle back there, during the paddle back, there appeared to be a common nighthawk swooping up some of the insects that remained in the air, but it was too dark to get a positive ID. There was good viewing from the C6 parking area, but being on the water just feet from the reed beds made it a real treat. And there's a picture of Owl's sunset. Like I said, everyone had gorgeous sunsets. And there is Owl's massive list of birds. So well done. That, that is impressive. 37 species. Um, and then it continues, and there's a picture of the Swarming Purple Martins by Tom Fishburne. And then Marianne and John Henderson, they, they were a little late September 5th, but I said, you know, that's okay, you know, send me, send me what you got. And they, they, they were able to get 31 species. Uh, they birded September 5th from 7.45 a.m. to 11 a.m. Um, and then notable, notable, notable species, uh, six pie-billed grebes, American coot, osprey, warbling vireo, red-eyed vireo, and then they did see 10 purple martins. So they, you know, it's not August, but they're still hanging around. And even in the morning, they saw 10 of the target species. Um, and then on the left there, beautiful picture of a pie-bill grebe by Tom Fishburne. And now um, we're at Tom's submission. He visited Nemesula twice, August 8th and then August 29th. So what happened was he went August 8th and, and got all these great pictures of the purple martins and some other birds. And then the brown booby happened and I sent him an email and I was like, you plan on going back at all <laughs> and getting some pictures of this brown booby for me? And he did. So I was very happy uh, that he was able to make that happen. So thank you, Tom. Um, so he says, Cindy and I got there just around 8 p.m. after taking the scenic route. Uh, and I, 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 I don't know if he intended me, he put this in the email to me, I don't know if he intended for me to use it, but I loved hearing um, about his whole journey he had that day, of all the different spots he visited, and then finally, you know, Nemesilla being um, the last stop. And then that second paragraph is a, a little bit of the technical aspect of photography, which I thought was really interesting. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and read it. So we had started mid-afternoon stopping at our driving through several spots, so Furnace Run, Wood Hollow in Northern Summit County, West Branch in Portage County, the southwest part of Berlin Reservoir in Stark County, and back in Summit County to Wingfoot and Springfield Bog before Nemesilla. So we like road trips, obviously. <laughs> um, and that's great. He covered several counties in, in his day. Um, I used two cameras in Nemesilla, one on a tripod to catch the sunset and distant huge flocks of martins, and one with my 400 millimeter telephoto lens to get some closer up shots. It's my 400 uh, millimeter lens that's made for ph photographing birds in flight with a superior autofocus. I caught a little sunlight on some of the closer birds. Photographing toward the west with the sun setting is a challenge. It did help that I found a spot a little to the north of the east bank where I could see birds more toward the south. Um, the skies were not as full of color as it was when I went two years ago, much fewer clouds this time. Um, so there's a, one of the pictures of the purple martins that Tom took with the sunlight on it. And then um, two more photos here. A flock of red-winged blackbirds fly over in a missile reservoir in Summit County. Um, that's a, I think that's awesome that he got them all in one shot there. And then a pair of purple martins catch the sun just before sunset. I thought that was a really playful image. I liked it, so included it here. So it sounds really funny. Uh, humans, too, were staging to watch the Purple Martins arrive on a beautiful summer evening at Nivazilla. Um And then Anna Osprey flies by over the West Reservoir. So two, two good shots there as well. And then thousands of Purple Martins gather as they prepare for their travels to South American wintering grounds. The numbers increased in the distance in the vicinity of the reeds. And then Tom returned on August 29th for the brown booby, as I said, and it is a lifer for him. It's probably a lifer for most of us <laughs> that went to see it, um, unless if we've been down to the tropics. Um, so the brown booby on its perch there on, on the left, the middle photograph, after an hour on its perch, the brown booby takes to the air to feed further out on the lake. And then the last picture, the brown booby plunges into the Mesilla Reservoir. I thought that was a really interesting sequence to, to see it, you know, kind of take flight and then to feed um, and diving into the reservoir. 
And then uh, back on its perch, the young brown booby was more animated during the second hour while I observed it from only 20 yards away. Um, you can see in the middle picture it doing a wing stretch. Uh, and then Tom included this little tidbit. Uh, during nesting, their webbed feet provide heat to eggs. And as you can see, it's, it's showing off its foot. All right, so I want to thank everybody uh, that went to Nemesilla that provided content to me. And, it, you know, and if you didn't and you still went, that's still great. You know, you went out and you went birding and you saw some amazing things. So thank you to Tom Fishburn, Joanna Terry Gorgeous, Sean Missig, Amy Pearson, who provided that one photo for me, Al Rand and Marianne and John Henderson. And then a special thank you to Summit County Metro Parks for Nemesilla Reservoir. Um, if you didn't get a chance to go, I did put the address there, uh, lot C6, um, if you want to go next year to see the Purple Martins. I found that that was probably the best um, boat ramp. It was really close to the reeds. Um, so if you want to go in your kayak um, or, or canoe or whatever you have, uh, lot C6 is where I would go. And then... Um, be sure to visit wcaudubon.org for more virtual field trip opportunities. Um, our September virtual field trip is at Lake Isaac. So, um, and this is really flexible. You can either just park and bird from the um, that parking trail area that's right there. There's also a Lake Isaac trail that kind of loops around behind um, the lake, or there's a lake to lake trail. So you could start at Lake Isaac, bird there, and then just you know hike on over. Um, you know, to another place. Our target species it, it are the fall warblers, so they'll be coming back down from Canada to, to winter south of here. Um, and they're not going to be in their colorful breeding plumage, so maybe a little more difficult to identify, uh, but we're up for the challenge, or at least I am. So you can register for all of our virtual field trips at wcaudubon.org. I'll click on About Virtual Field Trips tile on the home page, and it'll get you there to register. Um, and then our virtual meetup will be Wednesday, October 14th at 7 p.m., um, always the second Wednesday of the month. And with that, um, I'm opening it up for discussion. So do we have any uh, questions or does anyone want to add anything to what I've said tonight? Well, um, <clears throat> since I was late to the party and didn't get my uh, submission in uh, for the discussion tonight, which was my fault, um, <clears throat> so I have no one to blame but myself. This is Gloria. You were sick. You were you had <laughs> strep throat. It's okay. <laughs> and I will put it in. I will put it into the scrapbook. It just didn't make it for the presentation. Okay. Well, thanks. <laughs> but um, I. It just was so amazing to me that my friend George and I took our trip down I-77 because we decided that I grew up watching Purple Martins on my front, from my front porch when I was a kid because in the evenings we only had three television channels, three, five, and eight, and actually watching the birds. Uh, fly through the air and do their acrobatics to catch mosquitoes was a was a fun thing to do as the as the sun went down in the west and I really enjoyed that growing up. So I told my um friend Georgia who grew up in the plains of uh, South Dakota on a farm and she says, Oh, she says, I love bird watching. She says, I'll have to dig out my binoculars. May I go too? And I said, Sure. So we go down I-77 thinking that we're going to find Purple Martins, although uh, my friend Tom Fishburn had said a few days before that he had been hearing from people that the uh, crowds of flocks of birds were kind of uh, winding down and there, there weren't the thousands of birds and it was more in the hundreds. So when we got there, it was, it was, it was more in the hundreds, but it was still, I think for us, probably better that there weren't just these flocks of all these purple martins, because from our little bed of poison ivy that we were standing in, we could, <laughs> we could really watch them skim across the water and have a really good time. And so, um, 
I don't know how many of us uh, remember, but when David Lindo was here, he said, always look up. So I just, before we were about ready to leave, I looked up to the north and east, and I said to Georgia, I said, what is that bird? And she looked, and she says, I don't know. She says, it's not a heron, and I said, no, no, it doesn't have its legs sticking. I mean, I've always thought it's easy to know this is a heron because of the way they fly with their legs straight out behind them. And But sometimes, is it a blue, is it a green, and what is it? It's a little bit more difficult. I said, no, no, it's not a heron. I said, it's not. And she says, well, it's certainly not a gull. And I said, no. <laughs> and we we're talking about it, and I said, you know what? I just had this feeling of ocean bird. And she said, me too. I said, you know, like down by Ocracoke Island or in Florida. I said, but isn't that weird? So <laughs> we <laughs> picked ourselves up, and we came home, and, and we stopped to have a little bite to eat. And we're still talking about this really, really unusual bird and once again Tom Fishburn is the guy who teaches me I get up the next morning pour my cup of coffee click on Facebook and there is birth are those wonderful photos that Tom posted of the brown footed booby and I thought oh my god that's it that's the bird we saw so anyway, I uh, <clears throat> called Georgia and I said, I just sent you something. Look on Facebook. Is this what we saw? And she said, she's on the, so, oh, yes. So here it was. We went thinking that we were going to go back to the old days of our childhood and watch birds and, you know, flying and skimming the water. And we both had a life for bird. It was just <laughs> amazing. And we are now hooked on your virtual field trip. I've already signed up for Lake Isaac, and I sent the link to her today, and she'll be signing up. And there's not a one that we are going to miss. I can just oh, tell excellent. you. excellent. <laughs> so, That's good to so. hear. I'm so glad you had that experience and that you got a lifer. And it's <laughs> yeah. I do it mean, is so comical to, to hear that, you know, and I don't know if I would have known, you know, I, I, I would have been looking in my, you know, North American field guide, and I, it probably wouldn't be in there. I would have been stumped, too. <laughs> well, and the, the thing was, I mean, I said, you know, its wing kind of looked pelican-like, but mm -hmm. obviously not a pelican. And, you know, I mean, we knew, it was funny, we knew what it wasn't but we had no idea what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, that's probably, I don't know, but Nancy, is that sometimes what helps people narrow down to ID a bird is when they can focus that, well, it doesn't have this, or will it look, you know, body-wise a bit like a swallow? I mean, does that help people? Is that kind of how people ID, or was I just way off base? Um, yeah, you can do the process of elimination. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, no, nope, doesn't have that. Okay, doesn't have that, doesn't have that. Then you're narrowing it down to something that it did have. So, And what it might be, I yeah. That you might have a little more difficult time with because it's such uh, an unusual bird in an unusual area. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you would have to page through it. And, and, Michelle, it would have been in the North American Field Guide. Oh, would it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. If it's off the coast of Florida and California, it's okay. there. That was, it was really very interesting. I just really, really enjoyed myself. And, couldn't believe that we uh, that we had that experience. It was it was fun. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing. And uh, like I said, I'll definitely get that into the presentation or into the scrapbook um, for when it's published.
Anyone else have anything to share? Um, Tom or Sean, I, I covered your sections, but I didn't know if you had anything additional. Tom, are you mad at me for sharing your email? <laughs> Looks like we have somebody new that joined in, Laura. Oh. Did Laura, I don't know if Laura got Welcome. a chance to go in. Welcome, Laura. Thank you. I just want to say that this was a uh, an amazing location for sure. And it actually got me to take my kayak out for the first time in probably almost two years. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, that was welcomed. And uh, I forgot how much I love my kayak, even though it's a giant floating platform, 12 feet long. Oh, that that's why I took my camera out on it. I, I felt safe on it. But yeah. if I had a smaller <laughs> kayak, I would not have even ventured. Um, but, yeah, it, it was an absolutely magical place. I'm definitely going back. Um, thankfully, my girlfriend lives not too far from there, so... We're going to be making frequent, frequent trips there. Um, I definitely want to document and capture the osprey a lot more. They, they fascinate me. They are wonderful birds. And I, I'd even go so far as to say I think I like them more than bald eagles. And, Excellent. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's definitely going to be a spot. And this next month coming up, uh, Lake Isaac and all that, great choice for that that is uh, pretty much in my backyard. So. Oh, fantastic. It's nice and Yay, close. So we'll be oh. seeing you again. That's awesome. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be in on as many of these as I can get in on. This is, this is great and uh, definitely the types of events I've been looking for. Excellent. So same here with the kayaking. You know, I have um, my own kayak, and um, I let my friend borrow my other one, but I hadn't. I don't, I don't know if maybe I was in it last summer at the beginning of the summer, but I had to when when this when I decided to do Nimisilla and knew I was going to be kayaking, I had to hurry up and get my um, registrations renewed <laughs> for that so that I could be legal on the water. Um, yeah, I had to find my sticker. I, I yeah. renewed it and just not put my sticker on my boat. So oh, okay. That that was uh, that was a hectic couple of days trying to find that. Right. Uh, but I'm glad I did it, and it was totally worth it. Um, and and like you, I'm going to be going every every year in August. It, I'm a little further away. It's about an hour and a five minute drive for me. Um, but I think I can do it once a year. It was it was a really enjoyable time. And the ladies that I went with, they actually do a camping event. So I'll probably do camping and kayaking next year. It'll be fun. Make it worth the the long drive to stay a little longer, for sure. Nancy, did you make it out to Nemesula to see the brown booby? No, I did not. Um, I tend not to be a chaser. Oh. So, yeah, I, even stuff that's close by, I tend not to, to go with the crowd. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lone birder in some, <laughs> in some respect. I like going out with small groups, but uh -huh. no, I did not. Sorry. All right. Fair enough. I couldn't bring myself to go back. It arrived after I had been there, uh, but like that long drive and you know, maybe if it had been something more colorful, I might have been more tempted. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't go. But you know, I, I belong to several like Breeding Ohio Facebook groups and I really feel I got to know that bird very well over the week that it was with us. That's all anyone ever posted or talked about. I, it's almost like I, I did experience it. So it's good enough. I was I was truly amazed at watching the canoes and the kayaks launching for like the 40 minutes before the bird kind of congregated and started skimming the water. I mean, it was just, it was like being, I don't know, like a drive-in movie on the water or something. <laughs> All these kayaks and canoes when Coach and I were there, there were more people on the water than there were in the little area where we were. I, I mean, we maybe had only 10 or 12 people where we were. Um, it, it was 
really very kind of small, and it was probably not option space to be watching it. But I kind of like the fact that there weren't as many people around and things. Um, it would have been a little bit smarter of George and I to look out for the poison ivy. But after uh, seeing online that the people that were chasing around flooded movie, uh, they all talked about the poison ivy there. And it, it, I mean, it was kind of like maybe about two feet tall, and just, it was really huge. Luckily, neither one of us got poison ivy, and we're both definitely allergic to it, but um, it was definitely poison ivy, so I can uh, do it. But it was, I had never really seen how, I mean, I've seen birders, and I've seen groups of birders, and, you know, the birders we had in November, there was, a lot, you know, around 100 people that went to our bird trip, but it's kind of amazing for me to see so many people congregated in one space. Of course, there is 16 miles of uh, uh, shoreline, but to have them be so concentrated watching one, you know, flocks of birds, it was it was really. I don't know. It was. I hate to word the, use the word awesome because <laughs> that seems to me to be very overused nowadays. But it's actually it was kind of, in a way, very spiritual. The quietness, everyone enjoying the sight with themselves, but being in a community. And and hearing the bullfrogs and the you know the fish flopping and you know all of the just nature sounds that um, went along with it, it really allowed a connection to nature. And I think it's something that we really need somehow to promote these virtual bird trips as a way that that people can really very easily have a bit of nature that they can take into their into their heart and into their and center themselves during this time during the time of kind of social isolation and things. Um, I understand what Nancy has said. Part of the reason I always walk the woods in the when I was a kid by myself because I loved just feeling the sun on my face and just watching the wildlife and doing and it was a it was a natural thing to do alone. But this was really although Georgia and I were alone, we were in this community of people all doing the same thing. And that was different for me and really I think kind of awakening. I think it was an awakening for me, but I'll tell you, I'm hooked on the virtual bird trip, no doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Gloria. All right, well, if there um, isn't anything else, we are on our last slide. We are ending with the discussion, so... Um, Speak up now, or that's it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining me this evening uh, for the virtual field trip to Nemesilla Reservoir. Um, I hope you enjoyed it uh, with lots of beautiful photos. I mean, Nemesilla is a place that um, it's just it's hard to get bad pictures there. It's just such a beautiful location and lots of wildlife and um, and beautiful scenery. So um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next month at Lake Isaac. All right, thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. <laughs>